Hi everyone, I'm Noor Trichefchi. I run an interior design company in London. I'm an ex-aviation finance lawyer and I also have three young children. Today I am talking to you about the sofa to pick and the sofa not to pick. The most important thing to consider is location. It's not that I'm assuming you don't know where your sofa is going, but you really need to think about where it is going and who's using it. So for example, if it's a sitting room, you might use it differently. If it's just a guest space, you might use it differently. If it's a sofa going in a bedroom, you may use it differently. So when thinking about who is going to use your sofa, you've got three general categories, your family, your guests, or is it both? If it's family, like I said, you need to think about how old your children are. Are they teenagers? Are they toddlers? Are they babies about to grow into toddlers and then teenagers? Have you got pets? Have you got people in your family who are elderly? And so sitting low might need to be something you think about. It's going to be one of the biggest things you spend on in your living room. So you do really need to have a serious think about how you use this. Generally, when you have a sofa in a guest space, you need to consider having something a little bit more firm and upright. Nobody wants to fall asleep halfway through the evening in a really super loungy sofa. If, however, your sofa has to accommodate everyone for everything and every use, make sure you would have a little bit more structure in your sofa rather than have a super soft loungy sofa. You know, if it's got to accommodate everybody, you have to think about everybody. So in summary, in terms of location, think about who is using it and you've got three categories to think about, family, guests, or both. Okay, so now for measurements. You've got two different categories of measurements to consider. You've got your room measurements to consider and you've got your sofa measurements to consider and both are important. In terms of room measurements, you may have measured in a straight line and have two meters or three meters and think, right, that means I can have a two meter sofa or a three meter sofa, etc., etc. That's not correct. What you actually need to do is get some masking tape out, tape what size sofa ideally you would like, or tape a sort of rectangle, if it's going to be a rectangle sofa or an L shape, of exactly where this sofa is going. And then walk around that tape. Make sure you've got space to put, for example, a console table behind a sofa if you want a console table. Make sure you've got enough space for the family to walk around that sofa if you need to walk around that sofa. The other thing to consider in terms of its space in a room is how close it is to other objects. Now for the exciting part, the actual sofa measurements. Take your measuring tape and walk into a sofa shop. Try not to do it online if you can help it. If you're a designer, it's different. You're gonna to have to be specking these all the time. If you are a non-designer, take a tape measure, walk into the shop. The overall seat depth is measured from the front of the seat cushion to the front of the back cushion. It is not the overall depth of the actual sofa. That's what lots of people get wrong. They'll see depth of sofa on a website and that's what they'll think is a seat depth. That is not the seat depth because obviously you've got a back cushion there. Remember, it's the front of the seat cushion to the front of the back cushion and that's where you need to measure. So if you measure in inches, 21 to 24 inches is standard. In terms of centimeters, that's 53 to 60 centimeters. Those are really general numbers. So do go in and measure, but just to be general, because we're doing this video, a shorter seat depth is better for shorter people and a longer seat depth is better for longer people or taller people. And don't forget, if you have a very deep sofa and actually you want it quite deep because someone in your family is much taller than you, so for me that would be my husband, then using scatter cushions for when I'm sitting on the sofa is perfect and then taking them away for when he's using the sofa is the way to deal with it. Seat height is the next big one. And the seat height you actually measure from the floor to the top of the seat cushion. Now that doesn't mean the edge, that means the crown area, which is actually somewhere in the middle part of the sofa. If you don't have a tape measure and you do need to work out whether something is right, then you'll be able to assess this by just taking a quick glance and making sure your legs or the legs of that person sitting down are at a right angle or as close to a right angle as they could be. The reason your legs need to be at a right angle is because it makes it much easier to stand up. So generally that measurement will be 18 to 20 inches if you work in inches or 45 to 50 centimeters if you work in centimeters. Okay, finally, and this is my favorite one, it's the arm height. This is incredibly important because what you don't want to do is have a sofa that's in a living room where you need to relax and you're doing this. 
on the sofa. Again, this is a tricky one in terms of measurements and people do get it wrong. They think the arm height is measured from the floor to the top of the arm. That's not correct. Arm height is actually measured from the top of the seat cushion to the top of the arm. And designers should really know this, but obviously those of you who are not designers, that is the correct measurement. So if you do see it online, it's not the measurement from the floor to the top of the arm. It's the measurement from the top of the seat height to the top of that arm. For optimum support and posture, the correct dimensions are probably in inches, somewhere between four to 10 inches. And in terms of centimeters, that would be between 10 to 38 centimeters. Now that does seem like quite a large gap, but if you think about it, people's back heights are completely different. And so their arm measurements are gonna be very different. So you need to work that out really on a person to person basis. As a general consideration, if you have lower arms, the room will look and feel more open. And if you've got higher arms, the room will look a little bit more closed. So if you've got a smaller room and there's a lot of clutter what you're probably better to do is have a room with lower arms it makes everything feel more open so just to round this off generally when you're talking about measurements it's the seat depth the seat height and the arm height and of course you've got to be careful with how you actually measure those sofa filling knowing what is inside your sofa is very very important to determine the kind of comfort levels you will have and the kind of support you'll have on your sofa you get a structured look and a supportive feel with foam but also you can have foam in varying densities so obviously depending on what you want you can have it more firm or slightly less firm it happens to also be one of the more cheaper options so it will work for most people a fully feather filled sofa can be very very luxurious it has a super super soft feel but also it is more expensive it is more difficult to maintain sometimes they can be overfilled and then actually feel quite hard one of my issues with feather is I think lots of people do have allergies and so having a hundred percent feather can affect different people in the house so know who you're working with and know if there are any allergies around fiber the third option is a man-made filling of polyester it doesn't actually spring back in the same way as foam does, so it generally is better used as a back cushion rather than a seat cushion. I think the kind of compromise between all is a feather wrapped foam. I think that works better. You definitely get the shape with the foam. You then have some softness with the feather, and so it's a really great compromise if you're going to have to mix between all three. Style. Now, clearly this is very, very personal, but I can only really give you my take on this. Stay away from lazy boys. They don't seem to work in anyone's home. So far, I can't really tell that they work in any particular style. The Chesterfield sofa, for me, it just feels like a very, very dated sofa. Unless you're really going all out with that style and that look and you're in the countryside or you've gone for a really sort of office whiskey room look. I know that many people may have Chesterfield sofas. I have nothing personally against them, but they're not my personal style and they wouldn't be my personal choice. I like something in between a kind of classic contemporary, something with a nice shape. And I'm actually going to be doing a video where I walk you through lots of different sofas and I give you my loves and hates. Okay, finally fabric. And I say this last, but definitely not least. This is one of the most important factors to consider. But the reason I've left it right up until the end is because this is where you can really take your time. And hopefully by this point, you know what size you want, you know where it's going, you know who's using it, and you know what you want inside the sofa. Having a higher rub count. A rub count is basically where they've done a sort of technical test on a fabric and they've rubbed it many, many times to find out how that particular fabric will wear and tear. So the higher rub count you get, the better for the sofa if you want it to last a long time. Performance fabrics are more expensive fabrics if you get a really nice one. They can be a lot more expensive, but they are amazing for families. They are very hard wearing. They're also called indoor outdoor fabrics because you could use them outdoor just to show you how hard wearing they really are. If anybody does have allergies, then maybe you do need to consider something that is a pure wool or a pure linen. The reality is when you get even a really lovely cotton, the likelihood is it's been through a huge process full of chemicals. Some of you will know I have my own um, fabric company where we do 100% walls and we also do beautiful natural linens down below if you want to click to that link. Consider the fire regulations and the rating for your fabrics. Now the government will give you the absolute minimum regulation that you need to use to fire treat a particular fabric. 
It is a minimum guide. If, God forbid, there was a fire, do try and find out whether or not spending a couple of extra pennies will mean that you have a better fire rating, a commercial fire rating instead of a residential fire rating. Thank you so much for watching along with me. Do keep following me for more videos like this. If you want me to find out about different things that I can pass over to you, let me know what those are and I will make new videos on them.